Hey kids, welcome to unit three, lesson three, for loops, exercise number three, A. Much like our previous lesson, I am going to do one number example and one painter example. And today we are going to do a daily temperature. Let's jump in and see what we have to do. Well, the weather class has instance variables for the name of the city and a 1D array containing temperatures for the specified city. In weather.java, write the method get temperatures to return a string containing the values in the instance variable temperatures. In the method get temperatures, we're going to write a for loop to traverse the temperatures array and concatenate each value to the result. Finally, in my console, we're going to call the get temperatures method on the DFW object and print the results. Let's take a look at our code. We're not given much here. Looks like we're given an array of temperatures, which has some temperatures. We're instantiating a new object DFW of the weather class. It's passing two things along, the temperature array here and the name Dallas-Fort Worth, which is what I'm assuming DFW stands for. Under weather, we have a private instance variable city and then a array temperatures, which is a double. We have a constructor takes two parameters, city and temperature from above. We have a get method, which is getting the city. And we have a, another get method, which is getting the temperatures. We have our public string get temperatures. This is where we have to do some of our work. And that looks like it for the code. So what we have to do is write a method to return a string containing the values in the instance variable temperature. Well, that means we have to write a for loop. And this is a lot like what we've been doing for this entire unit. We're going to create a loop. We're going to look through each index and we're going to return that element at each index. Let's go down here and write a for loop. We need our keyword for what our conditions are going to be. And don't forget your curly brace. Inside, we're going to keep doing the same things we've been doing. We're going to create an integer index, which is going to start at the zero position in our array. Don't forget your semicolon. And as long as that index is less than, and we're going to traverse the temperatures. So as long as we're less than temperatures dot length, we want to keep going. And then after every loop, we want our index to increment up one plus plus. And inside here, we want to return a string containing the values in the instance variable from above, which is temperature. And if you look, we're returning results. So we want result to equal. And again, we could do result equal result plus, or we could just do plus equal. We want the temperatures at each index. Then we're going to concatenate and we're just going to do a little space so the numbers aren't squishing just like the last lesson. Don't forget your semicolon. Much like we've been doing this unit, we're going to look through each element of temperatures. At each element, we're going to add that to results. Now we have to go over to my console and we have to call the get temperatures method and print the results. So that means we system.out.println and inside here we want to call the get temperatures but from what object a dfw object and we want to call that get temperatures method that we just created now when i hit run i should get the temperatures printed off down here well let's see if we're right kids and there you go. We got our temperatures to print off. Key takeaway from this lesson, kids, is just showing you that we can do the same things with the for loop as we did with the while loop. It's important to note the anatomy of a for loop here. We have for, 
In a while loop, we created our index outside of the loop. This time we declare it within the condition. So in our integer index is going to be equal to zero. As long as that index is less than whatever array we're searching through, we want to do something. And that's our statement. After that, we want to increment up. But how we increment up is within that declaration statement in our for loop condition. Again, it's helpful to see that there really isn't much difference between a for and a while loop. Just the reason we'd use one. For, we know how many times we want it to run. While, we don't. Hopefully, kids, this video helped you understand for loops. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.